Good morning, everyone. <laughs> good morning, good morning to you, and uh, welcome to A Song in the Word. Uh, it's so wonderful to be with you again, and I trust that God has been good to you. He has been good to me and my family. Um, we've been through some, some rough patches, and I'm sure we all have our testimony to that. And I know that God is with us. I just have a beautiful testimony to share with you. It's really quick, but um, simply because even though we are going through these rough things, God wants to know that he is absolutely near to us. And we are absolutely dear to him. And he will never, never, ever leave us nor forsake us. Uh, I just want to pray. I, I have to be a word of prayer before I talk to you today. So, Father, in the almighty name of Jesus, by his power and his authority that he's given to me, I want to thank you. I want to praise you for every listening ear that will hear these words. I pray, God, that your word will give them the light and encouragement and upliftment they need. And I pray that they will hear your word for them today. I pray that it will send them back into your presence, into your word, to receive from you exactly what you have for them. And I pray that their way may be blessed. I pray that their understanding will be enlightened in the almighty name of Jesus. I give you thanks. Amen and amen. So it's a song and a word series. And uh, the name of my channel is To My Sisters With Love. And I'm Inga, I don't know if I said that. <laughs> thank you for those who just stopped by. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, thank you to my regular viewers. Thank you for your patronage, your encouragement, your upliftment and prayers, your support. And to those who have just stopped by, you're welcome to rate, comment, um, share, and of course, sub subscribe. So a few weeks ago, I went on the trail to walk. Actually, I was going to I was going to work out inside and um my friend said, "Why don't you go on the trail? Get outside." So I did and um, as I was walking on the trail, I noticed on the ground these leaves they were heart shaped. And I was like, "Oh, I didn't notice that before." I was walking on the trail where we have these trees on both sides and they formed a canopy on top. And the overwhelming sense that came to me was that I'm surrounded by God's love. Because when I looked down, I saw the heart-shaped leaves. And when I looked up, I saw the tree with the heart-shaped leaves. And I was like, wow, I'm surrounded by God's love. That same week, that very same week, I came out my back door. And I, as I stood there looking out, I was looking over the neighbor's fence, and right behind the fence, there's a tree. Now, this tree used to come all the way over into our yard, you know, over, and it would make a mess in the driveway every autumn because, you know, the leaves fall. And so, as I, I never really noticed, maybe I noticed, sometimes you notice something and you, you really just don't pay attention. But as I looked this particular time, I noticed that the trees leaves were heart shaped again and i said to myself i've always seen this tree but i always thought it was you know just troublesome because the leaves would just mess up the yard every fall and i would get annoyed especially if rain falls and the leaves get slippery and then they start rotting on the ground and you know if 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 uh if it's not cleaned up in in you know in a in a relative relatively decent time so I noticed the tree, coming back to the tree, and the hardship leaves. I was like, wow, that's so beautiful. And do you know, next thing I know, uh, about a day later, maybe they cut the, they cut the, uh, the tree. There was the part of, the, there was a part of the tree where the leaves were really pretty and green, very bright color. And then the bigger, leaves the bigger branches was a darker shade and 
they cut that part with the pretty looking leaves. I was like, devil is a lie. And then later on that week, the guy came and he just cut the trunk. And I said, you know what, devil? You know what? You don't got no power, no authority. This is the second time now I would meet the tree with heart shaped leaves. The third time I went to drop a friend to her appointment. And without even knowing where I was going to park, you know, I hadn't gone there before. I'd never gone there before to that location. I pulled up, I parked. And as I was sitting there waiting and I looked up, the tree that was over the parking lot, again, had heart shaped leaves. I said, okay, Lord, that's three times. That's three times. He said, I want you never to forget that you're surrounded by my love. This was a weekend that we had, um, end it now weekend, where he talked about abuse, ending abuse, not just abuse that occurs between men and women, although that's where it began, but by extension, you know, children and anyone else who ends up in abusive situations. So that was the weekend that we had that particular event. And I uh, was asked to sing. And so I gave that little testimony about being surrounded by the love of God. And in spite of what we have been through, we are always surrounded by God's love. We, we may not know why we went through certain things. And uh, this morning, as I was reading, you know, in Deuteronomy, the first three chapters or so I was reading. Now, Deuteronomy is the book where Moses is giving his going of his speech to the Israelites. And so he's reminding them of everything that God has done for them and why they must continue to serve God, etc., etc. But I'm only up to chapter 3. But there was so much packed into that. And as I thought about what it was really saying, there were a number of things that came out. A number of things. And I think it needs a lot more time than a few minutes. I'm already seven minutes in and I haven't said anything yet. Um, because this thing was jam-packed, y'all. Jam-packed. Moses began to tell them of how God brought them through. And he gave them this land, and he gave them that land, and he, he fought with them against this tribe and that one and the other. The hidden nations around, in short. Including Esau. Yes, Esau ended up not serving God. He went after other gods. Even though him and Jacob both had the same parenting and exposed to the same God, but they, do, they both chose a different path. God specifically told them not to try Esau. He said to them, they're going to be afraid of you. I'm just going to put uh, the scripture there. It's Deuteronomy 1, chapters 1 through 3. God said to them, you're going to meet Esau and his clan. Right? His nation. Don't meddle with them. They're going to be afraid of you. But don't meddle with them because of that. Do not try to take what's theirs. I gave it to them. I promised it. And if you do, you're going to be defeated. And that was one of the major things that leapt out at me. You know, God blesses whom he will bless. And we can't take that away from people. And if we choose to mess with people because we think that they are weaker or because we think that God is not with them, God is going to deal with us. God pointedly told them, leave them alone. Because God had blessed them. God had given them plenty. God had provided for them. And God was about to take them into the promised land. God has some instructions for them first. And you know, there were other nations that God gave them the same uh, counsel in terms of whether or not to go in and fight them. And for some, God said, go in, take it. it. Belongs to you, I've given it to you. 
and they went in they defeated they killed everything man woman boy girl animals but they only took the spoil as as you say the riches of what they had and Moses reminded them of all these things as long as we are obedient to God God will give us what we need and we don't need to try to take anything that belongs to anyone else at that time you know it was God's way that's how he dealt with his people and that's how he moved for them they were still in the wilderness and also Moses said to them listen God is saying you've been going around this mountain long enough it's time enough for you to move on before that he reminded them of how they had become so great in number that he had to divide them up of course under the instruction of his father-in-law Jethro who was also a man of God even though he was not an Israelite and you must also understand that there are people of God whom, whom God's spirit is on even though they not be may be a part of our congregation or a part of our church um we must listen to the way they speak and look at their their life and see what it what it's patterned after and his life was patterned after the law of God so Jethro had instructed Moses listen man you're doing too much everything is too heavy for you too burdensome and he was reminding the people like you guys became too much for me and he followed the instruction he didn't have to but he followed it even though he was in God's presence didn't mean that he, he couldn't take instruction that he shouldn't take instruction it was needful and sometimes somebody else has to come and look at the situation and say listen you're straining yourself you know you're burdened and he knew it you're burning yourself out so what he did he took those who were qualified not just anyone now not just anyone it doesn't mean that you just go and do any old thing you have to know how and and if you have to seek advice wherever you have to seek it uh from professionals who know how to do these things so Moses took the men of God who were capable of leading and helping and put them over different groups split up the people and he put the men over them and he gave them the smaller issues to deal with the more issues civil issues so there were things that God's people could bring in complaint and God dealt with it rightfully so and he said uh the bigger things you bring to me what do you think you can't handle you bring that to me so that was Moses reminded them of how God was leading and how God was uh with them counseling them God did not just leave them up to themselves even though they were in the wilderness and and then he said to them and it's starting this time now after he reminded them of everything that God did for them in that period of time he said it's time to move on you've been going around this mountain long enough and we are going around our situation some of us long enough but probably many of us most of us probably and i felt so impressed by these lessons that came out one god is going to bless who he's going to bless and we don't have a right to decide or to determine that whether it's in our church out of our church whether we consider them godless or what or ungodly god blesses whom he will bless <clears throat> and god curses whom he will curse and god will have mercy on whom he will have mercy but we need to be obedient to what we know god is saying to us that's our safety our safety is in our obedience he said if you try to take what's theirs you're going to be defeated but he will show you just where you need to take that land he 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 tell you who who you've defeated he said all right these people here take that as they wake it get rid of them some people in our lives are up to wickedness and we shouldn't tolerate them 
We should not tolerate them because they're going to go on doing wickedness to other people. That's what I got from that. Maybe, I don't know if it's a message for anybody else here. But if you know people who, who are doing wickedness, you can't turn a blind eye because you will become an accomplice, as it were, to that uh, person's wickedness because you know what they're doing is wicked. And if they're going to move on from you, you know they're going to do that same thing to your brothers and sisters and to other people in your community. Some wickedness you cannot tolerate. If you know that person is around and this is what they're into, this is what they do. And then there were other nations that God said, take it, it belongs to you. Listen for God's advice. Stay in his presence. Listen to his counsel. They listened to Moses and as long as they were obedient to what God said, God blessed them. And then there are seasons in our life. Seasons in our life. When you have to move on. Now, it seems sometimes that when God says something, it's hard for us to believe. It's easier for us to believe for other people than it is for us to believe for ourselves. They went into nations, plundered them, took what belonged to them, took their land. In the wilderness, y'all, this is when they were in the wilderness. Moses was only with them during the wilderness period because after that, God took him and put him to sleep. So this was all in the wilderness period. I'm telling you, I'm talking to somebody today. Sometimes we're in a wilderness. That was one of the other things that came out. It doesn't mean that you're not prospering in the wilderness. We always think the wilderness is a place of dryness where we don't prosper. The wilderness is a place of where we come into the presence of God and we are being prepared for something. In the meantime, it does not mean that God will not prosper us. We may not even realize that we are in a wilderness because of our material prosperity. But we may be in a spiritual drought. Remember times when they didn't have water. But God said, listen, I'm setting you up to understand that I'm your provider. We may be in a wilderness, but we may still prosper. But God was saying, okay, it's time for you to get the real blessing. And I have given you enough time to show you that I've provided for you time and time and time again. And if I've provided for you in the wilderness, I'm going to provide for you anywhere else. Everywhere else. Come on. You in the worst place that you could be. A wilderness. And I still give you land from other heathen nations. I still cause you to conquer. These people on the outskirts of the wilderness. I still cause you to conquer those people. Sometimes if you're in a wilderness, it doesn't mean that we're not prospering. But we might not recognize it as a wilderness because of the material prosperity. What is our wilderness? Sometimes it's a spiritual wilderness. It means coming into the presence of God so you can hear clearly what's the next move, what's the next step. Where you are embodied or are undistracted from other voices. So you can hear God clearly and distinctly. But Moses said, okay, now God is saying it's time to move. It's time to move out of here. You know, when they came into the wilderness, there were others who were born in Egypt. They would have died. They came out as old people, the old generation. So many people died in the wilderness in their old age. And there were those who were 40 years old because they were born in the wilderness. Of course, and then the younger generation who were born in the wilderness. But God had said, I haven't finished with Deuteronomy yet, but God had told them, you're all going to die in this place because you refuse to move on, to listen. Joshua and Caleb came back with the report that, yes, there are giants in the land. Yes, we see the obstacles, 
But we are too focused on the obstacles. We need to remember what God did for us right here. Joshua and Caleb, although they were young men, they were not the youngest, um, they encouraged the people. Listen, we have to believe. When are we going to start believing what God says? When are we going to be trusting God fully? We've seen what God has done. Right? Um, because they were in the minority. Because they were in the minority. Two people against ten. Because twelve of them went over. The ten said, man, the land is flowing. It's beautiful. It got everything, man. It's got everything. We set for life. And they were. They would have been. Well, most of them. But they did not believe. The next thing that came out at me was that if we're holding on to our past, we will not. Inherit what God has for us. I, I, I am contemplating that because I believe that I may be in that place. Sometimes you hold on too much to the past, to the things that have hurt us. We got to stop talking about who hurt us and why. For some of us, it goes back all the way to childhood. What our mother didn't do, our father didn't do. We can't keep blaming people for our hearts and our pains forever. We have to let go. And some of the Israelites did not go over because they listened to the complaints of those who had come out of Egypt. And they had complained about wanting to go back to Egypt. The place of slavery. The place of bondage. You want to go back to a place of bondage when God is offering you total freedom in a land flowing with milk and honey. There's something not right. And the enemy can mess with our minds. Who are we going to believe? God or the enemy? And when we refuse to let go of what was in the past, whether it was done to us unfairly or not, we have the power to let it go, to give it to God. Simple, as simple as saying, Lord, I gave it to you, take it. Because God was willing to take the grief, the misery, the pain. God knew it, but he cannot force himself on us. He can't force himself on you. One of the other lessons was that you have to let go of the past. You have to choose. You have to decide. They're still thinking. They're still hung up on that. Many people, they go, they sit on the therapist's uh, couch and they talk to a total stranger about things that have happened to them in the past and why they think they are the way they are. The therapists keep asking questions and making suggestions. But really, you are the one that's working through these issues. It, it, ultimately, you are the one that must work through those issues. You can even work through them with God if you're not... Uh, capable if you don't have the monies i'm not saying everybody um i'm not saying to you all that a therapist is unnecessary or not helpful it does help some some but a lot of people spend their entire life going to a therapist when you when you go done with the therapy already another human being cannot help you no matter how qualified they can offer advice. And yes, there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. After you receive the counsel, you got to come back and make your own decision. It's the same as salvation. You listen to a number of preachers for how many years? You still have to make that ultimate decision. It's going to come down to you and God. And you and God alone. And so many people died in that wilderness because they listened to the people who came out of Egypt and all the complaints that they had the generation that went into the promised land were actually children 20 years and up died in the wilderness all of them died in the wilderness because they refused to let go of their past and embrace the new thing that God was doing in their life I, I, I didn't know if to focus on one thing out of these chapters but I said, maybe I should just mention 
So I, 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 I hope that there was something in there for you. If not all of it, but I hope there was something in there for you. And, 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 and this young generation, as we see here, they are faced with so much more and many more distractions. You see, the young people that were born in the wilderness, they didn't know Egypt. All they knew was the wilderness, but they also witnessed the miracles and, and, and victories that God gave his people. But there was the counteracting influence of not just those who came out of Egypt as God's people, but those who were Egyptians. And so they have two, uh, two sets, two different streams of thought to battle with. And they have to make a decision. And sometimes we have to be careful what we put into the minds of our young people. And God wants to use them. They, they have the strength, the endurance. And they have the mind, they're quick, the capacity. They need the instruction of the older ones because uh, Joshua and Caleb, who would lead after Moses died, were not in the young, this younger generation. So they still needed the guidance of the older generation, at least 20 years older. And God said, listen, Joshua. You're going to take over. Moses gave them his, his departing speech. And I'm not through it, Deuteronomy. This is just the first three chapters. And I'm saying, wow. There's so many things that I garnered out of those three. I, I don't know what to share and what not to share, but I decided to share some of the things that just jumped out at me. We have to let go of our past. We have to let go of the pain. God wants to shift us into something new. And we are refusing to let go. And we must be careful of how we poison the minds of others especially this younger generation, with our rebellion and our stiff neckedness. The people were rebellious and stiff naked. Rebellious and stiff naked. Refused to embrace something new because they they weren't sure all they were afraid. Fear holding them back. Afraid of the giants, afraid of the obstacles. God said and he already pro uh proved it to them by the nations that he told them, take that. That belongs to you. Take it and wipe out that nation. And where he didn't want them to go, he said, don't, don't go and meddle with those people because you're not going to win. Even though he said to them, they're afraid of you, they would have fought. He knew that they would have fought. Even in their fear, they would have fought back and they would have won. God would have given them the victory because God promised it to Esau and God kept his promise. That should tell us something. I should tell us something about God and who God is. God is not flippy floppy. He's not going to promise us something now and then go back on his word. But it's up to us to follow him. Sometimes he will take back what he gave to you. Sometimes he's going to let it be. Because there are other people that he's going to use to bless. With your prosperity. And I'm not just talking about physical or material prosperity. Spiritual prosperity as well. So I pray at this. Whoa, this is very long. I pray and I hope that we know where we are. I pray that we don't allow our past to hold us back anymore. I pray that we're not influencing the young people in this age with our stiff neckedness, our old traditions, or anything that can hold them back from where God is leading them. God is leading us into better things. Some, many of us, for some of us, we are going to die in this wilderness. COVID proved that any age is matter. Only God knows. Only God can bring judgment. I'm not saying... Uh, COVID was a judgment for every person that died. For some of it, it was the hand of Satan. Nevertheless, God allowed it. We only know 
that we can trust God and we can trust his wisdom. And he let many of those people die in the wilderness. The younger generation, the children that were who went over into, into, into the promised land. And God gave the, the promised land to those young people. Don't get left behind because you refuse to hold on to the past. Or you are afraid of the obstacles in the future. God has led you and brought you here to this point. And he's going to take care of you. So, make that change and move forward. Make the change. Make the change. It's time to change. So, I pray this word blessed you all today. And um, let's not let our past ruin what God has for our future. He's going to be there with us. He promised never to leave nor forsake us. He's true to his promise. My all-time favorite song, I'm going to do that for you. He's been faithful. He is a faithful God. He always will be faithful. He's my all-time favorite because even when I don't do what he says, even when I'm not faithful, he is So here we go. In my moments of fear, through every pain, every tear, there's a God who's been faithful to me. When my strength was all gone when my heart had no song still in love he was faithful to me every word he's promised is true what I thought was impossible, I see my God do. He's been faithful, faithful to me, looking back. His love and mercy I see. Though in my heart I have questioned, even failed to believe it has been faithful, faithful to me. I hope and I pray that we would stop questioning. We would accept what God has for our future. Let go of the old and embrace the new. God is doing a new thing, or at least he wants to. And he's a faithful God. He will bring it to pass. Well, are you ready to move forward and do something new? Are you ready to make a change? He's been faithful, faithful to me. Looking back, his love and mercy I see. Though in my heart I have questions. Even failed to believe, yet he's been faithful, faithful in my heart. I have questioned, even failed to believe, yet he's been faithful, faithful in my heart. 
questioned, even failed to believe, yet he's been faithful, faithful to me. He's been so faithful, faithful to me. God bless you richly. And I pray that you can make that change. Embrace the change, embrace the new move, embrace the spiritual move, whatever and whichever it is for you. God wants to make a change now in your life. All right, take care. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of the day. And I'll see you next time on A Song and a Word. Bye-bye.